It's Friday night, 6 p. Pacific. I'm sitting in my Monstera plant. I got my window unit AC behind me. It's a low budget show. And you are joining me here for Love Line at Night with Heidi B. I'm thrilled that you're here. Everybody who's still quarantining and doing Girls Night In, grab your closest beverage. I'm having a diet ginger ale um, and settle in. I'm really excited about the topic tonight. A couple of weeks, oh, before I get started though, I gotta tell you, just one little plug, shameless plug, it's my show, so I do that. So um, I want you to head over to my website when we're done with this, go to HeidiBCoaching.com, hit the subscribe button because you will immediately receive my free webinar on how you can quit being a people pleaser. I feel like everyone needs it. If you don't need it, I know that you know someone in your life who needs it. Not only will you get that, but every week I will deliver to your inbox uh, the Relationship Ready Podcast with an accompanying worksheet. So all you personal development junkies out there, just get on that, head on over to HeidiBCoaching.com and get subscribed. You won't regret it. Okay, so last week or uh, actually last week there was no Love Line at Night um, on Saturday. Anyway, the point is a couple of weeks ago, I talked about on again, off again relationships and just how they wreak total havoc and tons of chaos um, in our lives, how they can take up so much emotional bandwidth and how it just like feels like you never, it's, they're so hard to get over. And I was thinking this week about what it takes to get over um, a, an on again, off again relationship. And I really think that part of the problem on again, off again, relationships are complex. There's a lot of layers to them. This certainly isn't the only reason that they're challenging to get out of. But one of the reasons they're challenging to get out of is because for me, my own personal experience has been that I really struggled to trust my intuition. So I make a decision about the relationship, decide I was going to leave it. And then two days later, I go like freak out. Oh my God, what have I done? That was, that was the best thing that was ever going to come my way. I can't believe it. I'm overreacting. Feel, I mean, on and on and on down the rabbit hole, right? Until before I know it, I'm back together with whoever it was that I was adamant about breaking up with two days prior. So I think that the core of that is about not trusting ourselves. And so tonight I wanna to talk a little bit about the return to intuition and some concrete tools that we can use to find our intuitive thought again, to find our divine knowing and to become um, able to trust ourselves and our decisions um, in every aspect of our life, but especially in the relationship aspect. I can't tell you how many women I work with, how many of my clients have their shit together in every other area, business, career, um, you know, family life, like with their relatives, you know, all kinds of, you know, fitness life, wellness life, all that stuff is on lock, but the relationship stuff they don't trust themselves with. So how do I learn to trust myself that the choices I'm making are good for me and that I should sustain them? So the first thing I wrote, I did have to make a list because there are four things I want to talk about. I didn't want to forget a single one of them. The first thing I would suggest is it's not sexy journal. So getting pen to paper on this is so important because what happens when we have these thoughts about second guessing ourselves or undermining our progress that we've made in leaving someone or a relationship is that it really just starts to swirl around up here. And before we know it, we've got just kind of this cesspool of thought going whirling like a whirling dervish up there. It really, really helps to get it down on paper. So I'm going to say grab a journal and just start writing stream of consciousness about why you want to leave, what's going on, what you're unhappy about, why that's confusing to you really just write all of the things you are thinking. Now I would encourage you to avoid prompts. So I know you guys know that you can like hop on Pinterest any of the week and see all kinds of inspirational quotes about how relationships are. And I just want to remind you that paper does not refuse ink and the internet does not refuse anything. So basically anyone can hop on their Canva and make a cute little square that says some crazy quote about like how relationships should be and can pop it on Pinterest. So if you are going to, if you are going to use prompts to journal, I would suggest that you use prompts that come from a reliable source, some kind of mental health professional, um, maybe somebody that you follow on Instagram that's in the mental health field. There are so many great therapists that you can follow on Instagram. I personally follow two that I love, Dr. Morgan Coaching on Instagram and also Dr. Francis Morgan. They happen to have the same last name. They both happen to be beautiful blonde women who are incredible in their field, um, but they're two different therapists and they both have great stuff to write about or great content that you could write about as it pertains to relationships. So if you are going to use a writing prompt, I would highly recommend that it come from a qualified source. Otherwise, you might find yourself considering um, some kind of advice or information on your relationship that maybe isn't even like great advice to be considering, you know, that you might just, you might have made a great decision for yourself, sought out something on Pinterest, just, you know, decided that that was something good to write about and undermined your 
undermine your own decision based on something that like some Yahoo just wrote on, you know, opened up their Canva and wrote on and then pinned to Pinterest. So that's my first suggestion. Journal, journal with a stream of consciousness about the on again, off again nature of your relationship and why you're deciding to leave it, why it's no longer serving you and what it's making you feel like. If you decide you need to use a prompt, I would grab one from a qualified source. That's number one. Number two is gonna be get quiet. So after you've journaled, it should be a lot easier to get quiet, but I would take the time after you've journaled to meditate. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of meditation. I feel like I actually recommend it here every single week that I'm on, but it'll be easier to meditate when you don't have all of these crazy thoughts uh, excuse me, I shouldn't call them crazy. When you don't have all these thoughts swirling around about should I, shouldn't I, did I do the right thing, didn't I, all the what ifs, all the, you know, all the second guessing. So that will be all on paper. And then you can take an opportunity to open up your phone, set a timer for three minutes, find an intention to meditate on, and just get quiet. You, It's amazing what will come to you in this space. Your reassurance, your intuitive thought, you'll be able to actually hear it because your brain won't be so preoccupied with all of the other noise that, that has been taking up emotional bandwidth in space. The third suggestion that I'm gonna make is to, I'm so embarrassed I have to look at this list. I should actually just put it on post-it notes under my phone, but anyway, that's another day. The third suggestion I'm gonna make is to affirm yourself. So like I said, so many women I know have so many things going on in all kinds of areas of their lives they're great business women, women, they have like a health and wellness journey that's fantastic. They have great relationships with their parents. But when it comes to trusting themselves about their choices in relation, romantic relationships, they feel like the wheels are always coming off. So affirming yourself can look this way. It's one of my favorites. You can basically just wake up every morning and go, I am a good, I mean, it started as easy as this, I'm a good human. But then you can even go further and to go, I make good choices. I make good choices for myself and I can trust the choices that I make. So that's a really great mantra or a really great affirmation to write down and to say to yourself three to five times a day. I like to do it in the morning. I make great decisions and I can trust myself to make them. Um, the other thing you can do, affirmations is another one that's like kind of tricky. I feel like they're everywhere, you know, so use your discretion when choosing an affirmation. One of the places that I know of that has great affirmations, I think they're all great things to work with, would be the Instagram account Affirmation Destination. So check them out and grab, a, grab an affirmation to work with. The last thing that I will suggest is to cut the energetic cord to this person with whom you are on again, off again. So there are plenty of, um, there are plenty of people out there that do healing work and do energetic cord work, energetic cord cutting. So you could search that service out and pay someone for that. But you could also just start to visualize, um, you know, close your eyes, get still and start to visualize you and the other person. And like maybe even just like a blue cord of light between the two of you. And then you can start to visualize cutting the cord and stepping away from the person. So it can really be that simple. Um, but if you think that you would benefit from a more formal energetic cord cutting, like I said, there are plenty of people that offer those. So thank you so much for joining me for Love Line at Night. I am, this was such a great topic. Tune in again tomorrow night, same time, same place, Saturday, 6 p Pacific. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, take care. XOXO to the max.